What do you want? What do you want? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Alex, that's Phoebe, and that's Big Red, 1986 D150, Magnum 360, runs 12s in the quarter. But today what I wanna talk about is how I lowered the truck, did it about five years ago, and get a lot of questions about how I lowered the truck. So we're gonna go back to the house, take the wheels off, and I'll show you what I did. All right guys, back at the house, have the right front wheel off. And just a note for you guys, most of these things sit lower on the left front than the right front. I don't know why, they just do. So measure your wheel height before you start if you decide to do it. And you're probably gonna notice that it's lower on this side. I've noticed about 90% of these trucks do that. As far as lowering it, not too much. You have a lower control arm for a B van, a B150, it has the same ball joint. The difference is the cup for the spring is lower. So like the, the D150 has a flat control arm. This one has a recessed hole for the spring. So that's what it's lower in the truck. Now back there, the bolt that mounts it to the frame is bigger than the, the trucks, the D series. So you have to drill that hole to the size of the bushing. I can't remember what size it is, but um, that has to be drilled out bigger. And then, so the, the whole deal with the, the truck not being level, I ended up switching springs from left to right. That didn't level it. Ended up buying new springs, that didn't level it. So what I finished up with is taking about half a coil out of my right side and that made it level, so. It's about it as far as lowering it. There is, you need to make a, you need to have a smaller bump stop. And if you have a heavy passenger, it's lowered enough to where if you have like a 250 pound passenger riding with you, you may bottom out and hit that bump stop, but um, not that big a deal. And then on your, on your shock, I have a 9010 shock. Just put your, put the truck down on suspension, measure it and uh you can order a shock accordingly i don't remember what that shock is it's been it's been a while you see it's all dirty I and mean, then all this stuff was new when i did this but um as far as the front goes that's about it lower control arm different shorter shock different bump stop and uh drill out that hole back there that's about it okay on to the rear already got my wheel off set us up on jack stands and from the factory these come with the axle below the spring and I just did a homemade flip kit now in order to do that I purchased a new perch uh, Mancini Racing also bought a shock plate from Mancini Racing with the U-bolts that is for a uh, I think a 68 69 charger something like that and uh, what I did is just put the axle on top of the spring with my perch on there you see there's just uh, there's a hole to center it on the uh, bolt that goes through the spring and once it was on there and tight, went ahead and set it on the ground and set pinion angle. So you're going to need a, an angle finder and you're also going to need a welder. So once you find your pinion angle, you can go ahead and weld this up. You just weld around, weld around here, just a small weld on each side and that's it. So the shock plates that I used, it kind of puts a heavy angle on the shocks, but that was the only way I figured I could do it with the space given, because if I ran them straight down, they were more straight straight down from the factory and uh, just had more room for travel. So I did it this way and it's been on here for five years and it's working fine. It's uh, never had any problems in the back. I've never had the back bottom out either. I should have taken this perch off while I was, while I was at it, but I didn't. So that's been on there. But yeah, that's it. Homemade flip kit. You need a welder, you need a pinion angle or an angle finder, you need you a perch, set of plates, and that is it for the rear. All right, so Big Red's back together, ready to go do rips again. Probably gonna take him to Cars and Coffee on Saturday because Mr. Jones isn't ready yet. But um, one thing else to note with this lowering, so, 
you have the drag link that goes across and the tie rods are at a, an upward angle now on both sides. It gives a little bump steer, but I've never had any issues with it. It, it seems to work just fine. It drives nice. 65, 70 down the highway, it just, it just, it drives good. Um, another thing, when I, whenever I got it aligned, when it first got lowered, I asked the guy for the alignment sheet and he said it was good. He wouldn't give me the alignment sheet, but it really doesn't seem to be eating up tires or anything. It, it had some wear on the old tires. I just replaced those about a month or two ago. It had some wear on the front tires, but those tires were over eight years old. They're like 10 years old and they've never been rotated. So that might've just been wear over time. But anyway, that's, uh, that's it on the drop kit. And for Mr. Jones, got it tagged and insured this week, going Tuesday to get the alignment done. And uh, after that, we'll be ready to start working on the Phytech, doing some testing. It starts off rich and it's got, I think it's just uh, rich all around, but um, we'll get it worked out. That's a learning curve on that. That's a new system for me to learn, but um, I think it's going to work out good. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Hope this helps you out. Hope y'all enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.